Hello and welcome to episode. Um, no, no. <laughs> six episode six of the Nerds at Large Gaming podcast. Great start. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Ari Hallman. I am your other host, Jeff Mayo. And Jeff, we are free men. Yep. Finals are over. Yep. Now we work. Yeah. But I played a video game last night. Which is probably good to be on a video game podcast. <laughs> since, since this is audio, my face is a look of shock. <laughs> yeah, I've um, kind of, I think I've done three episodes of a video game podcast now without actually playing a video game, like, even once. Which is probably not good, but if there are still people listening, now I'll finally be able to play. <laughs> <laughs> I played about, like, probably... Five hours, maybe total, or something of Horizon between last night and this morning. Still, absolutely loving that game. That game is a fantastic game. I, I mean, like this is, it's it's May now. This is kind of old news at this yeah. point, <laughs> which is just it sucks. <laughs> I don't know what to ask you or anything because it's been so long, and also, <laughs> and I don't even like I don't even hear people talking about Horizon anymore, which is kind of sad to me. <laughs> Because Zelda, man. I know, but... I don't mean that sarcastically, unfortunately. No, and yeah, I still hear people talking about Zelda left and right. Which, I mean, like, Zelda deserves it, but it's just kind of sad. Yeah. Like, like, Horizon is not... Like, this is not a game that should be looked over. Because I think in any normal circumstances, this would be crazy. But I'm still, like... Like I um, said multiple podcasts ago, the last time I was actually able to play this game. I'm still loving the story. Which is what's kind of, like, fascinating me. It's almost like, it has like Game of Thrones type politics, which is very interesting. And I would, was certainly not expecting that. And then obviously robot dinosaurs mixed in there. Of course, of course. It's, I mean, it's really, really, really cool. Well, you should, <laughs> anyone who hasn't checked it out, check it out. And I, at some point I have to get you to play it. I'm planning on it. Yeah. So, but what have you, you've, you've done some Zelda, I'm guessing. I had done some Zelda. Um, yeah, and I must add, that's more shrines about to do the, I think I'm about to do the final main dungeon slash divine beast. Mm. So, yeah. You going for Ganon soon? Um, I'm debating if I'm going to do all the shrines before that. Uh, okay. Or at least do as many as I can. Yeah. Maybe. I, I still also got more of the map to explore. I at least want to explore everything before I do that. Yeah, you maybe should. You might lose motivation to do all the shrines if you do Ganon yeah. first. At least I might. I yeah, my one hundred percent will be just doing all the shrines and beating Ganon. I'm not fighting all those stupid Korok seeds. <laughs> not all nine hundred of them. You're not going to do that, Jeff. <laughs> no. No matter how Nintendo makes, e- how much easier Nintendo is making it through DLC, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. You know anything besides Zelda? Um, yeah, there are a couple things. Um, cart? Yes. I, last week, purchased Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Switch. Um, haven't played it much, haven't been able to play it with friends. I just kind of messed around, um, playing, like, a couple cups in handheld mode to see how it felt. Felt great. Good. It looked great. Um, yeah. Ran have, very smoothly. Have you tried it with just a Joy-Con yet? Cause I'm in- interested to... No, I meant to do that, but I have not tried that yet. I we think we may try that later tonight. Yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> um, yeah, and I must add to that, I try to, like, um, all the different battle mode modes once against computers. That's the same as playing with players. Mm. I'm sure we'll both have more to say about that later on. Yeah. Just some quick impressions later. Um One thing, I, I'm very interested to see Mario Kart sales. Like, I'm very interested to see how much this... Oh, you haven't seen... I haven't seen it. I haven't put it in news, but it's apparently the fastest selling Mario Kart. Oh, and it's on like a yeah. It's and there's only like a million. Oh no, no, it's crazy so far. How this thing is selling? Like everyone who has a Switch is getting Mario Kart. Yeah, Yeah. and people seem to be wanting to buy the Switch for Mario Kart. So, only Nintendo can put out a how how old game like now or whatever. And it's got to be. I actually want to. Is it 2013 or 14 where it came out? Either way, I mean yeah. that's like it's 2017. So you get a four-year-old game, and this feels like a new game launch, yeah. which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, also, last week, as far as you know, Switch multiplayer games go, I got Puyo Puyo Tetris. Yes, yeah, so we will have to give more impressions on that in the um, <laughs> the future. Um, yeah, I mean, but... do you think the purchase is worth it, or do you think like the demo was? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. It was okay, definitely okay. like um, just me playing it. Like I started the adventure mode, which apparently decently lengthy. Like it could be like I can't remember. I might I might hear people say like eight to ten hours, and that just depends on your skill level. And I'm awful. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm bad at it, but I am seeing myself getting better the little I'm doing it. Um, the story is just stupid, um, crazy BS, but it's so far entertaining enough in a way that it's just a little more something in between the different stages to, you know, just a little entertainment between stages to help you keep going. Mm. Cause the way, um, it, the story mode works so far is each, their chapters, um, and each chapter has like 10 stages in them and each okay. stage is a different thing. And there's just little story cutscenes in between them. That's true. Yeah, it's it's fun so far, and there's a bunch of different modes, and they, I can see myself messing with like just whenever I'm sitting around having nothing to do. So. I just wouldn't mind like maybe doing like a let's play video in that too. If, like, yeah. We'll talk about that later. That we want to start, start yeah. doing that and, kind of stuff. And like, again, it's only thirty bucks, and and I know I've said this before, just so people know if you're interested, it's also on the PS4 because yeah. I know more people, a lot of people have that. Yeah. So I definitely recommend it. Yeah, we'll have more impressions like. How crazy it is as a multiplayer game with all the different modes later on. Makes you hate your friends. <laughs> yep. Just like Mario Kart. It fits perfectly on the Switch. Yeah. Um, and the Nintendo family of BS games that make you hate all your loved ones. Yep. And for those two games, we'll have more later on. I've played two more games. Well, I guess kind of games. All since last podcast. First one is the Prey demo. Mm. Which is the first hour of the game. And I played What Remains of... Edith Finch. And we'll talk about both of those more in the yeah. next episode. Yeah, Darby hasn't played them yet, so we're going to wait to... Um, he does to talk about more. And yeah, we're thinking of, for the next podcast, having um, the main topic being, uh, I guess, a good way to put it, is uh, what remains of Edith Finch, Finch spoiler cast thing. Yes. Where we'll just kind of say how we feel generally about the game without spoilers and then go into spoilers. I'm very looking for that. So yeah, if you're listening now and you're interested in this game, it's just $20. Mm -hmm. Very artsy thing. Like without spoilers, Jeff said he really liked it. Yeah. So I think it's definitely worth You can pick it up. You can play it in a night. It's like a two hour. But it was, I can't remember the exact time, but yeah, general, generally people say two to three hours. It just yeah. also depends on how much exploring you do. Right. So, easy, quick game, play it, and then listen to us talk about it. Yep. Yeah. Be awesome. That's your homework. Yep. That's your homework right <laughs> All right, Jeff. Well, let's, let's get into this. I think that's the quickest we've done. What are we been playing? I'm trying, man. <laughs> I mean, I can sit here and talk about, honestly, about how much I love Horizon. I could talk about it for a long, long, long oh, time. But we don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, about a, like, two and a half month old game now. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna start the news now. Let's do the news. Okay, news jingle, 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 jingle. Thank you, Jeff. Um, this first story is an update on the Persona Five streaming situation. For people who may have listened to some of our last podcasts, we did this as a topic of the show, and this is more to just update. Very angry topic of the show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, this story comes from Miranda Sanchez from IGN. Last month, Atlas released strict rules for streaming and posting late-game Persona 5 content, but now the developer is changing its limitations in response to fan criticism. Atlas announced that players can now post and stream videos up until the in-game date of November 19th. Previously, players weren't supposed to post anything past July 7th. Um, and then Atlas said, we, are, we also want to apologize to those of you who saw the previous guidelines blog post as threatening. We want to be transparent about what we do, and the reason we released the guidelines was to give streamers the right information up front. It was never our intention to threaten people with copyright strikes, but we clearly chose the wrong tone for how to communicate this. I don't see this helping too much overall. <laughs> yeah, no, Jeff, it's fixed now. It's great. It, it's November. It's not July. All of our problems are solved. That was that was it. Now you We're can, good. Now you can stream halfway through the game instead of a quarter of the way through. Perfect. Thanks, Atlas. <laughs> Uh, no. I don't know if there's anything more, but if this is it. Yeah, it's kind of like this doesn't exactly fix things. Um, it's like they didn't actually understand why people are mad. Yeah, it, it really doesn't seem like they they just don't get it. Yeah, I mean, like it's it wasn't the fact that it was July seventh instead of November nineteenth in the game. It's the fact that people like people are like people aren't gonna watch a stream of your game. Like, if they don't want to be spoiled. Yeah. Like, I just... 
like we had the entire topic about it, but you're guarding, you're trying to guarding a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah, and moving it. I guess what you, the people can stream to later is not going to change the amount of people that are going to just watch the stream and the people who are going to buy it. No. Uh, and that's the pro- <laughs> The people who are looking out for, like, searching out for a stream, they're searching out for a stream no matter what. You're not, like, yeah. protecting them from spoilers. The people that don't want to be spoiled aren't looking at the end of this Twitch streamer's thing for Persona. It just it, it's such an antiquated thing. It doesn't make sense, and this is a laugh. This is a laughable solution. Yeah. It's really like <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. But not much more to say. There's really not that <laughs> much to say. It's really just like it's kind of it's more funny than anything. Yeah, at least not Nintendo this time. And and I I feel like eventually, especially with how much um developers like Atlas and Sega and just like Japanese companies. How much for console games like this? They're starting to rely on the the West because yeah. the console market in Japan is like dying fast. I feel like eventually this kind of stuff is going to be weeded out. Like they're gonna they're gonna have to rely on our audience so much that the there's just going to be enough anger that they're just like, all right, fine, you know, and get with it because just for better or worse or whatever, that's just the environment we live in. Like you, yeah. with streaming and stuff like that, and I really, it just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. But well, uh, on to the next story, darling. Mm, yeah, before we have a couple game announcements, we'll go to the first one, and this is from Jonathan Dornbush, my GM. Activision has confirmed just when Call of Duty World War Two will be released, while also offering the first details about the game's campaign. Um. Oh yeah, I guess. We didn't say this last time, say it was announced because there wasn't any information. We were waiting to know their information. No, so people get the timelines straight. Um, so yeah. Following a leak of marketing materials, Activision announced that Call of Duty World War II, developed by Sledgehammer Games, will release for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC on November 3rd. Those who pre-order Call of Duty World War II will get access to a private beta later this year, which will be available first on PS4. Alongside that information, Activision offered new details about World War II's single-player campaign. The solo chapter of the game will follow U.S. Army Private Ronald Red Daniels as he and the other members of the U.S. 1st Infantry Division fight throughout World War II's European theater, primarily during 1944 and 1945. Locations will include the famed beaches of Normandy, as well as scenes set during the liberation of Paris before the division finds its way to Germany. Both the D-Day invasion of Normandy and the Battle of Bulge, two of World War II's most well-known battles, will be featured in the game. And the campa- campaign's cast includes Josh Duhamel from Transformers, Jonathan Tucker from Kingdom, and Jeffrey Pierce from Bosch. And also, World War II will also offer a separate co-op campaign featuring an original story, which Activision confirmed will be a Nazi Zombies cooperative mode. Because it can't be Call of Duty while it is in zombie mode. Nope. Um, this... Like, it's probably a good sign that for the f- first time, honestly, since I was in, like, middle school, I watched this Call of Duty trailer, and I actually got really excited. Like, I was actually very interested into it, and I, I kind of, like, I, uh, like it's, I'm more interested in the World War II setting versus the, like, future space setting. I think that's for most people. That's most people. Well, but- even though it's sold. <laughs> And that was, I was already going into it with that in mind, but even like that side or whatever, this trailer, it just looks really cool. Like it's, it looks like it's actually like trying to tell a story. Yeah. Like a kind of engaging story. And I've heard stuff about like some of the people that is writing it and it kind of like seems very promising. It seems Mm -hmm. like they're trying to tell kind of a more like human story. Yeah. Like gritty and not gritty for the sake of being gritty or anything, but But, like, I mean, war is gritty. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they're telling a war story. Yeah. And it's, you know, like it's kind of hard to, it's hard to tell. I feel like there's a limit to how much of a human story you can tell, like when you're jumping, when people are running on walls and you, and giant mechs and doing all this and stuff. So I'm very interested in this because I actually, I really, I, I 
kind of rail on Call of Duty a lot and make fun of Call of Duty Who a ton because it's just it's so easy it's so fun to make fun <laughs> of them but like the old like Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 those are legitimately like, good games those are really mm. really fun games and the stories were very interesting in that even the original Black Ops it was weird but the story was really cool so I want them to treat this almost like a movie like in ways in good ways yeah. not bad like, I want it to still feel like a game but I'm excited to see you know, like, them tell the story and where it goes. And I know, like, the main character is, is supposed to be, like, a 19-year-old kid. And, like, I know they, like, I heard they said that, like, he basically, he you can only do what, like, a 19-year-old kid who's kind of scared and going into war like this would do. So that basically means there was there's going to be sections where you're, like, controlling a plane or a tank or doing other that. Apparently in those sections, I think you're going to be a different character. Like, they're... Mm. Basically, they're going to make it so it's not like this random 19-year-old kid suddenly knows how to drive a tank. You know, like, That's so good. <laughs> that, that shows they're trying to make take like a very realistic route to yeah. this to the point where they're kind of taking the video game, like, you know, a lot of video games you throw logic out the window yeah. and this, this random dude can kill everyone and do all this. They're kind of trying to avoid that, which I find interesting. Yeah. I don't know, like, I, I doubt you're that, you're, you're probably still not that interested in it, but it, I don't know, where is your, where is your level with Call of Duty War or 2? I'm, um, I'm interested. And the story sounds interesting, and yeah, the, I guess, you're going for a more realistic um, thing, it's, yeah, again, yeah, more interesting, but I'm just not a big first-person shooter guy overall, and, mm. um, it's got a, this got to be one or two things, or, you know, make sure both the story's got to grab me a lot. Or from what I seen, or mechanics got to be different from a typical first-person shooter. Right. Call of Duty doesn't really have that, which it's fine. That just means it's not for me, and that's just okay. Yeah. I mean, in a lot of ways, they've perfected that, but I mean, they've kind of yeah. strayed away, like the first-person shooter. I mean. Yeah. Um, my biggest fear with this, I'm, I'm like, I'm not 100% convinced that the story is going to be great, but I'm pretty, like, I, I'm feeling good about that. I just fear. Obviously, with like the later Call of Duty, so much of the inf- like the um, emphasis is put on multiplayer, and the single player, like even if it's good, it's only like five hours long or six hours long, you know, or it's very abbreviated because yep. they're focusing on the multiplayer, and like I want this single player to feel like it's worth sixty dollars, mm-hmm. and that's where the big, that's where like I'm still worried. I'm still yeah. worried that I'm not gonna feel like buying this because. I don't really care that much about the multiplayer, mm-hmm. and I just you know I want to I want them to make sure that both sides they feel full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be kind of smart for them to do because again, this is very anecdotal. Being just looking on the internet, and then again, a lot of stuff we look at aren't usually the biggest. I'm calling duty in general, Not but yet. I do see a fair amount of people say, "Yeah, I usually buy like Call of Duty or those just kind of first-person shooter games for the story." Yeah, just like some people do the same thing for the um, NetherRealm fighting games. Yeah, and and I know people who feel the same way as me and who, who haven't bought Call of Duties recently, kind of because of that. Because yeah. you know, part it's not interesting them, part fatigued, but also part they don't care about multiplayer. And then when that's what most of your game is focused on, it just makes you feel like you're yeah. paying too much money for it. You know, Activision has the money to focus on both, <laughs> and I hope they do. And it kind of like. It, it, it's a good sign that this first trailer is just story. It's like it's like, and then the multiplayer is kind of afterthought in the trailer. Which now I, you know, I want like obviously people love the multiplayer. The multiplayer is going to be a huge component. Yeah. I just hope that it doesn't overshadow the single player like other times. But it's looking like that's probably that might not be the case, and I'm excited about that. And also, it's just very interesting. Obviously, some people have been saying like, oh, they're just copying Battlefield with um, Battlefield 1. A lot of people have said this even though this game's been in development long before Battlefield 1 yeah. ever came out. Like, you know, the, like Call of Duty goes between three different developers. This game's been developing for like three or four years. Like, there's legitimately no way that that's... But it is interesting that it's kind of like a coincidence they both happen to go back to these old wars. Yeah, I mean... Which is just... But the thing with Call of Duty, and this is me as an outsider, so... Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, weren't a lot of the old Call of Duty World War Two? Isn't 
It's been, and then people wanted to go back to our roots, and that's kind of why they're doing. Yeah, this. it is like, it, but it has. It's been like a decade since yeah. they've made a World War Two game. It's been a long, long, long time. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. They they've done it. It's been a while. That's what fans want, and mm. this is a good chance to pull people who've been out of it a while back and still keep the people who've stayed. Yeah, I, I think that's why it's not Battlefield. I mean, it was. It's not Battlefield because of the time. Like this was developed before that. But even besides that, I think this is to please the old fans. Yeah, and. But it is just interesting. I think they both probably just saw trends of like people getting tired of space <laughs> shooters and stuff. Yeah. But another interesting thing is, does this mean that Halo can just jump in and be like, hey, we're the only ones now. We're the only space like first person like big name space shooter. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it depends if you count Destiny or not. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's for multiplayer ones go. That is, that is very, very true. And I feel, I feel like people feel better about Destiny at the moment. <laughs> they do. They do. Okay, so. Feel better than Master Chief and that poncho or whatever the heck in the last E3. Was that, or that was two E3s ago, I think. That long? I felt like it was longer than that. Maybe. Three, maybe. Because that, that was announcing the last Halo, know. wasn't it? And the last Halo came out a little while ago. I think I've missed a, like, a surprising number of Halos, like. I think I, like, I feel like I blinked and then like now Halo's on the decline and like multiple games have gone by. I used to love <laughs> Halo so much. I obviously I'll, I don't have a system to play it, which is part yeah. of the problem. But I think there's still only been five main ones. Yeah. I don't know. Might be getting a new one this year. Who knows? Okay. okay, moving on. This comes from Alana Pierce from IGN. Hey, Alana. <laughs> I like Alana. Okay. Um, THQ Nordic and Gunfire Games have announced that Darksider Study is currently in development and is scheduled to release sometime in 2018 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The game is set to be an open world action adventure that includes a focus on exploration and environmental puzzles and will continue the series staple hack and slash combat with new protagonist Fury. It's set around the same time as the events of Darksiders 2, which was released almost five years ago. It will follow Fury's quest to destroy unique physical versions of the seven deadly sins. Gunfire Games' development team includes multiple ex-Vigil Games employees who worked on Darksiders and Darksiders 2, including the game director, executive producer, technical director, lead environment artist, and more. So yeah, more games. Yeah. <laughs> 2018 games. Kind of coming out of nowhere. I think this is this game's had like a long history of like, oh, it's coming. Oh, it's never gonna come. And like, yeah. oh, it's coming again. Oh, the studio's under. Oh, they're back. You know, it's <laughs> kind of been up and down and crazy. I don't really, yeah, I don't really have a history with Dark Siders. Yeah. I just know that people say it's like a Zelda clone, or you know, trying to be Zelda yeah. very hard. I think I've heard people say it's the best Zelda clone. Mm. Maybe. I think I heard mm-hmm. that. I mean, like, that's, whatever. I like yeah. Zelda, so. <laughs> I'll keep, but I know, I'm open minded. I'll keep an eye out. I know it's kind of like a country. I've heard some people like love Dark Siders, and then other people like absolutely hate it. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like one of the other. I'm just interested to see how this does. Because I, yeah. I kind of feel like Dark Siders is kind of niche. I mean, you know, just from observing other people talking about it. And I just, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, there's a trailer out, and judging by the trailer, I mean, it's kind of a cinematic trailer. You're looking at the art style, it doesn't, it doesn't scream really high budget, so. Yeah. At least true. to me, so. That's true. It may not need to do as well to make its money back or, you know, be successful. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of times, like, some, yeah, some some games, like, yeah, if you, if you set expectations and budget correctly... You can just target a specific audience. You can target your hardcore fan base and still be okay. And that's, mm-hmm. and I think THQ Nordic is obviously new. And like, I know these guys have already, like, I think Alana had, um, has a, like, I think it's the IGN first this month or something. It's one. It is. It okay. Is. Cause Alana was talking about, like, on the last, um, podcast Beyond, how she was talking to them and, like, the developers, like all these guys, they used to be like working on. They used to work on Dark Siders, and they were working on this game before they like went under, and now they're back again. And a lot of them said that they thought that this, they it felt like they were home again, like working on this and like working with all their friends. So it, it sounds like a really cool story. Yeah, with them like coming back and working on this game. So that's cool for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and 
cool for the fans because I've you know read some comments here and there that are obviously people that are really excited like I can't believe this is happening type thing so yeah. good for those people yeah yeah let's move on now another game that no one expected to actually come out <laughs> yep uh, this comes from Chris Morgan from IGN Capcom has announced that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite will be released for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on September 19, 2017. What about the Switch? I know, right? <laughs> Fuck Capcom and Nintendo be buddy buddy. Mm. Moving on. The release date was announced with a new trailer, which also revealed the first details of the game story and its villain, Ultron Sigma. <laughs> a combination of Marvel's Ultron and Sigma, the big bad from Mega Man X. Capcom also revealed two new premium editions of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. A deluxe edition will be available for $89.99 US dollars and will include access to six post-launch characters, the first of which will be Sigma. So a boss character won't be in the game at the beginning. Um, a $199 US dollars collector's edition. It's a lot of nines, a lot of numbers <laughs> there. was also revealed, which will include four interlinked statues of Mega Man X, Chun Li, Captain Marvel, and Iron Man, as well as a box of light up Infinity Stones. Uh, I know how much you like your stones, Darby. I love I love my stones, especially when they're Infinity. Yes, <laughs> Infinity and Beyond. <laughs> I mean, um, that and Marvel and Vince Stain Company. But they don't even give you the gauntlet. No. Well, how am I supposed to take over the galaxy or whatever the heck? Thanos wants to do. That's going to be for the year game of the year edition, or whatever the complete edition in the a year. super ultimate ultra edition. Yes, you know how they do these things. You the, just add a wait, bunch wait. of adjectives. Since to Marvel's on it, you add marvelous into the name. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> in a blog post on Capcom Unity, Capcom also confirmed eight of the fighters joining the fray this time around: Ultron, the Incredible Hulk, Thor, Hawkeye. Rocket Raccoon, Chun Li, Strider Hiryu, I pronounced that wrong, please forgive me, People and Chris happy. Redfield from Resident Evil. These eight joined the fighters previously re- revealed at PSX, including Ryu, Mega Man X, Morgan, Captain Marvel, Captain America, and Iron Man. So, really no surprises as far yeah. as those characters. <laughs> I think it was, it's safe to assume that the Marvel side is greatly focusing on the MCU. Yeah. Oh, all those, all the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to be in there. You know that it's not just going to be Rocket, Rocket Raccoon this I, time. Well, right? that sounds boring. I, I think, I think if Guardians of the Galaxy, they just stick to obviously or Rocket, at least Star Lord. Oh no, I was going to say, I think the best thing we do is do Rocket, Star Lord, and Groot. Yeah, they'll probably at least do. Yeah, they, they might not put um, what's her name? All See, right, I always forget her name. God, uh, it was about to. I was about to say it, and then I know I, I don't know. <laughs> well. I guess also they need to pick up the slack, and that's more Capcom characters. Though I know Marvel's the big thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're trying to get some of the big ones out. That's what this game like. It's kind of weird now. Like back in the day, like obviously, I mean, I think Marvel was always probably bigger, but like back in the day, it was a little more even with like yeah. Marvel and Capcom. Like you could put Ryu and Iron Man, all these like in the same, and it kind of made sense. Now it's like Marvel's so much bigger than Capcom. Yeah, it's like Capcom's Mar- been- Marvel's just been going up in popularity while Capcom has just been having as a whole a steady decline. That's why I'm I'm a little worried this is just gonna become like Marvel and Friends. Like it's just gonna, yeah. they're gonna be shoving the Marvel characters up to the forefront. Yeah, it'll be the obvious Marvel characters and then to make Capcom keep up decently as far as character power, they just they'll just go with the obvious Capcom characters as well. Probably. So they'll lack the deep cuts. Yeah, which I, I want them, you know. Yeah, I hope we still have people like like Dante. Like, I hope we still have stuff like. that. I feel like that's one that will should yeah, be in. I think I think Dante's a staple as far as the Capcom crossover yeah, things. Like, he was in Project Cross Zone. Yeah, I I haven't played this game. That, that game is so long. Marvel yeah. vs. Capcom. I'm, I like. I, I want still to, have the Ultimate Third Edition whenever my house for PS3. <laughs> I want to play this. I'm just like, there's so many games, and I'm where I don't want. I, don't know if I'm gonna want to spend the money well, on this, but well, we watched we watched and, them before this. There, there's a story trailer as mentioned in, in this article, and there was a gameplay trailer, and, and that's where the, another problem with me play. I mean, all right, the art style. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, it's not the best. Yeah, it's 
it's a weird thing to say considering what this is when Marvel's involved, but it does look pretty low budget. It looks like a PS3 game. Yeah. It looks like a PS3 360 game. I mean, a lot of that's to do with our style, but if I had to give it, I mean, in this, I haven't looked at it in a while, but I think Marvel vs. Capcom 3 looks better. Yeah, because like they went more for like the comic book looking art style yeah. or whatever and that holds up where this is I guess going for more of a somewhat more realistic thing but still kind of cartoony but it look, just looks weird yeah it looks very strange there's some stills of um for Chris Redfield Chun-Li and Morgan like of their faces it looks <laughs> bad <laughs> Like, I wonder if this game has just been, they've been making it for so long that, like, when they started making it, it didn't look as bad, and now we're here, or if that was an intentional choice. It could, I don't know. Because, I I mean, like, we didn't really know any, this game kind of came out of nowhere, as far as I know. Like, I didn't really see any, like, leak thing. This was kind of like... Um, it was leaked, I think it was leaked a little beforehand. Or at least least not, at least not, like, it wasn't, like, you know, a long time before, at least Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yeah, I guess it was a little before PSX. Um... But yeah, as far as like as far as me getting this, I mean, I enjoyed the game, and I'm admittedly a sucker for crossover stuff. <laughs> um, but nothing in this necessarily looks that interesting to me. Like no. I, like I have doubts of like how good slash long, how quality the story mode will be. I mean, probably yeah. not great. Yeah, yeah. And, and like this is Capcom. They're not exactly the best. Is you know the single player stuff and having a variety of modes or yeah. anything to, to keep people like us interested and also I don't want to compare this to Injustice but that's kind of the one we'll be talking about we're excited for the Injustice thing is easier the fighting style is easier for us to grasp yeah no I, I, I do I think it's actually fair to say that with Injustice I was gonna say while I, I enjoyed the other Marvel vs. Capcom a lot and I, like I just said I think a big part of that was because of the characters and it was just so fun to have like Dante fighting Iron Man like do all this other stuff but when it comes to an actual fighting game I like much much prefer the Injustice Mortal Kombat Mm -hmm. even Street Fighter type things over this I I mean like part of it I was never good at all Mm -hmm. Marvel vs. Capcom and just kind of the it's more is it it's more fast paced or I don't know how exactly to describe it. It's just different. It's yep. a different type of two D fighter. Mm-hmm. Like um, you can't just pick up Mortal Kombat and then pick up that and be good at you know, it's not the same thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll be I'm interested to see how well this sells because in a way, from a casual standpoint, I don't just what they said. I mean they'll have the Marvel star power, but that necessarily not everything Marvel will automatically sell. No. That's not the way these things work. Um but also they announced, and I don't know all the details, I probably should look at that, but apparently they're adding some stuff to make it more casual friendly, like setting up modes so people can do, like, press one button and do strings, like, and do combos and stuff, so obviously the hardcore fighting game community is up in arms about that, so you're okay. kind of pushing away those guys as well. I guess that's like a setting, though, right? Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not saying that would affect I mean, like, me, that's but... Probably, like, that's probably for kids, like, they're hoping maybe some kids will pick it up or something, yeah. but... Yeah. I mean, which is fine because I can promise you there will be some kids like, ooh, Marvel. Yeah. And might even, like, even though it's a different kind, me- there's some Mega Man stuff flying around, so they might see Mega Man and be like, all right, let's be real. The people who see Mega Man get excited are 20 to 30. No, I'm <laughs> saying there's a new Mega Man cartoon apparently coming out. It looks bad, but it's coming out. <laughs> and. We were kids once. Kids don't usually have good taste. Uh, she's like, can you name a single Capcom character that, like, really, like, any, like, kid nowadays would be like, ooh, look at that. Like, like oh, it's so-and-so. Like, it's just weird. Probably not many. I and, mean, again, most of Mega Man because there's still some stuff. There's still some stuff around, and Mega Man's is, for the most part, a child-friendly design. Like, it is. They may be like, ooh, this guy looks cool. I do think there's the core, like, Marvel vs. Capcom group that will buy this no matter what, yeah. and they're excited for it. But, yeah, I do question how big that is going to be. And, like, what's the release date for this? September 19th. All right, that's a de- that's a pretty good time to release this, probably. But there's also like Destiny is. No, no, is, we're continuing the trend of every week we're announcing an <laughs> August September game when in the beginning we had nothing. You're right. Yeah, you're right. It, it, so so it, now we're at the point where August not, September is not a safe month because there's a bunch of big games there. 
Yep. I mean, you can argue, I guess, some of them will be different crowds, but still, that's some big, pretty big games. But you're right. That is happening every week. We're like, oh, that's a good time. It's like, okay, maybe it's, it's not. It's getting increasingly worse to the point only June and July are kind of safe. Because 2017 is freaking stacked. Yes. All right. And we're not even... We haven't even, don't even have a lot of the October, November, December stuff announced yet. Oh, yeah, we don't even know what's coming this fall. That's yeah. Crazy thing. We have a couple things, like the staples, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. This comes from Sal Romano from Gamatsu. Bandai Namco has released the debut trailer for Code Vein. It's upcoming action RPG due out worldwide for major home consoles in 2018. So, yeah. Sorry. We watched the trailer mentioned. We did. Um, I want to apologize to Sal Ramada. Oh, wait. No, that's right. Okay. Never mind. I thought we said it wrong. I was about to because I, for some reason, forgot to put the O on yeah, the document. Yeah, that's fine. I, so I, I was going to say, I, Roman, I, I, I was just, like, nope, nope, nope. I just, that's want, right. I just wanted to fat, fat check poor Sal. I didn't want to yep. didn't want to ruin it. Yes. Um, Code Vein, we watched this. Looks like anime Dark Souls. Yes. I, yes. Think, I think that's what you described it as, and I yes. thought that was pretty valid. I, I think that will definitely appeal for to people. I like the aesthetic overall. It looks like it could be... It looks kind of fun. I Like like I said, I like the aesthetic. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see more. Because technically it's not much. No, very Japanese vampires, creepy yeah. monsters and stuff like that. Yeah. I want to see more gameplay. Like, yeah. you know, there was obviously a little bit but Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, in the trailer there was a little bit of gameplay but not much. It's just enough to let, to make it look like, ooh, Dark Souls and give you an idea of... Um, Enemy designs, which I think look cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Darby said it has vampires, a lot to do with, you know, story behind that. And also in a statement that Bandai Namco released her, they mentioned it gives you a hint of the companion system. Because the character you control has an AI companion following around and yeah. fighting as well. Which, I don't know much about Dark Souls, but that sounds like something that separates them. I, mean, I know some, but not everything. You can do that. Like, you can like invade other people's things. Yeah, yeah. You, you can I know you can do. Like, the, I know you can do that. But it was like it's like a. It was like it might be like, like a, an a permanent. AI, yeah, like AI thing. thing. Yeah, that is different. So, yeah, that's cool. So, we will. Very interesting. We'll keep up with that. It still yeah. weighs out. We, we'll, you know. Yep. Might. Uh, I guess if they're releasing this close. They may not do it, but it might be like an E3 trailer thing. We'll see. Mm. Bandai Namco likes to do a bunch of random trailers during E3. Yeah. Okay. Next story, and this is a Darby thing. I thought it was something yeah, he would like. This comes from Joe Scrabbles from IGN. Ubisoft seems to be teasing fans with something to do with Far Cry 3. <gasps> you heard me right. But you may not have understood what I said because I say Dilly weird. If you haven't ever said <laughs> Don't make fun of Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> On its Facebook page, the developer posted a picture of the game's Rook Island setting, along with a sentence in French that translates to, an island we never truly left. On its Instagram page, it adds, does that remind you of something? Um, it also linked to a picture of Far Cry 3 villain and fan favorite, Voss, uh, accompanied by his most famous line of dialogue. What is the definition of insanity, Joe? Um, doing the same thing over and over again. But in expecting a different result. Oh yeah, that too. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, the uh, oh yeah, that's where I was. Okay, it's not clear what Ubisoft <laughs> is teasing here. Some online rumors have suggested Ubisoft will make a sequel or prequel to the third game storyline, although these are by, by no means substantiated. A remaster is also possible, especially if the mainline series does indeed take another year to return. That said, with the game turning five years old this year, it may simply be that Ubisoft is. Um, starting anniversary celebrations for one of its more enduring popular games a little early. IGN has contacted Ubisoft for comments, and yeah, it doesn't like they've responded. <laughs> so, I um I absolutely love Far Cry Three, like fantastic game. Boss, like I was telling Jeff before the show, top five villains of all time in video games, hands down. Boss is great. That being said. I don't want them. I don't want this to be a sequel game for Far Cry Three. What about a prequel game or a prequel game? Okay. I don't, I don't want it to be on Rook Island or set in any of this because part of what I love about Far Cry so much is like every game you get another crazy different 
like location. Like you're in the Himalayas, you're in an island setting, you're in prehistoric times. You know, like that that was a little more crazy. But like I want to see what other type of environments and other type of game, like other type of thing they can do. As much as I love this, I don't really want because so much about Far Cry Three is not really about the story. It's about venturing around the area, finding things, like liberating outposts, do all this or whatever. And honestly, Far Cry games are already similar enough without you literally going back to the same setting. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Here, I'm just looking up something real quick. So may I can make a and point? The- okay. And that that's what you know, that's what interests me about these games, and as much as I love that one, I don't think you get that much by going back to the same setting. Yeah. Because I kinda feel like that story's done, obviously. I mean like it really is like I won't spoil the ending to it, but it's done. Like, yeah. <laughs> well I was also gonna ask at least if there's some game. some reason to believe that a prequel would be good to focus around Voss in some way, but I don't know. I think I think you'd you'd leave that alone. Okay. Um, well, I was about to say, and they mentioned it here, it could be a remastered thing. I was, I, what I was doing, I'm sorry if you heard clicking noises when I was clicking on my keypad for my laptop, but I was looking to see if Far Cry 3 has a, like, current gen port. Where I've seen it, it does not. Yeah, no. so, so that would be fine. Yeah, That's I was saying, they, they could be doing this as just, like they said, if it's going to be another year for the next Far Cry, as just something to make fans, you know, give fans something without much effort and as we've seen throughout this generation ports sell mm. yeah no I'll probably and, it, and it's been long enough for this game where people will be like okay I'll play it again and make it look better I very well might buy it if it's a port yeah. I'm perfectly fine with a port I just don't want but the only whatever DLC they have because I know they had DLC oh Blood Dragon Blood Dragon is fantastic mm. that's, that's another so thing see do that yeah release it with Blood Dragon yeah that so would be... for like 40 bucks boom oh, yeah. 40 50 bucks boom and, and and I think there's a good chance that that's all it is. Yeah. I'm just worried because obviously we see Call of Duty going back to its roots and stuff like that, Battlefield going back, whatever. Um, and I'm worried that they're just going to be like, oh well, Far Cry Three sold well, let's just go back to that well, you know. And I just don't want them to ruin it. Like yeah, Voss, yeah. he's such a great villain, but I want that to stop. I, I want to just remember that. I don't. Yeah. I don't want them to try like going back to him again because they're, then they're going to be like, "Well, we have to one up from last time. We have to make it, you know, better mm-hmm. than last time." Like it, it, it just sounds like a recipe for disaster to me. Yeah. Also, it just sounds weird going back to not the latest Far Cry titles, like doing something with four and then going back a game further to three and doing like a prequel sequel to it yeah, it just feels weird <laughs> it, yeah it is weird so again yeah the remastered thing just makes the most sense out of all this it does and I think and I think it'll sell pretty well yeah. like if it's a boy if it's a remaster they get so. people more hyped for Far Cry 5 yep and I I am a huge Far Cry fan like yeah like, I don't think that they're, like, crazy games. They're pushing the gaming genre, like, the gaming industry forward in some awesome, like, revolutionary way. But they also don't need to be. Like, we can have games yep. that are just fun. And yep. Far Cry games are unbelievably fun. Have, like, junk food games. Yep. Like, for me and Darby, the Tail series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not really doing anything revolutionary, but it's fun. Yeah. And that's what games should be. Like, they should try. They should be fun. And I think fun. Yeah. And that's... This is kind of a topic for another day. I'll, I'll, we're going long on this or whatever. But this, another reason why I don't like when people rag on Ubisoft so much. I really like Ubisoft. A lot of their games mm-hmm. are kind of samey or whatever, and they don't do anything crazy revolutionary. But they know how to make a, a fun game. Yeah, I, th- I think it took a little while. Maybe they could have done a little shorter, but they knew where to stop with Assassin's Creed for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like you can argue they may win a game or so too long, but they at least stopped. <laughs> and and I think those games are still fun for like their audience. The yeah. I mean, like yeah, they went too far, but they realized it and they took a year off and they're like reevaluating and stuff. And I'm not saying they do everything great, but people try to make them out as this like horrible company or this company that puts out like these just like like puts out these games with no thought or whatever and just mm-hmm. game after game. I'm like. Yeah, boring open worlds. I think they're fun. Like Watch Dogs Two seems awesome. Uh, Watch Dogs Two. I mean, and they Love learn from the and like I'm saying those games like a lot of them are saying they're all about like like kind of open world and like points on the map like a lot. And Far Cry is the same way. Assassin's Creed the same way. They borrow from each other a lot, and none of them are telling these crazy stories. But they're all just like they're video games in kind of the purest sense. I think they're mm-hmm. really fun stuff, and I like really like Ubisoft. 
like you know, a lot of their games. They're not none of them are going to be like my favorite games of all time, but that's fine. That's I can't say that. We'll see what they do with South Park. <laughs> this is true. That has the potential to be up there if they nail it. Yeah. My opinion. Okay, moving on. We bring it up whenever there's news related to it, but we have a, a couple short Italy news update things, just so people know. First thing, and this was a couple hours ago. I had to add it at the last minute. <laughs> Breaking news. Sony has announced their press conference time. It's going to be their normal time, which will be uh, Monday, June 12th at 6 p.m., Pacific time, which is 9 p.m. Eastern time. The news is there's no news. <laughs> no, it's, it, it yeah. is important. Everyone's switching around, so it's like, yeah. yeah. Which, that's also a good time for us, you know, because work. I, mean, I might still be working, but yeah. that increases our chance to watch it. Yeah. Live and stuff. Well, especially you. <laughs> yeah, I won't be working on so. Yeah. And um, Nintendo has announced they will not have a press conference, and there will be more details later. So they will probably do a direct. Hmm, no. That I mean, that's no surprise, no, but no. you know, must might as well put it out there. Yeah. Not much to say about those things, but figured they should be stated. Yep. People know. Important stuff. Yep. Now speaking of Nintendo, we got some Nintendo news, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. You don't have to apologize for talking about Nintendo. <laughs> I don't know. I feel, I feel weird <laughs> like I'm inserting this on there because of what I like. He's he's so he's gone through so many years. Of the, he's gone through these years of the Wii U. You're used to having to be a closet Nintendo <laughs> to hide your shame from the world. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. We're not used to this much Nintendo news. <laughs> it's much attention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, this first story. This is information um, I got from Luke Riley and Jose Artero from IGN. Nintendo has revealed the new Nintendo 2DS XL. You heard right. It's 2DS. Which will arrive in Australia slash New Zealand on June 15th and the U.S. on July 28th. Huh. Is that a typo? That's a big difference. Oh, well. Um, oh. I copied and pasted. I'll, I'll check. Just keep yeah, reading. Yeah, okay. The new system will have a recommended retail price of U.S. dollars 150 and Australian dollars will be 200 um, according to Nintendo, the device sh- should fill a hole between the existing Nintendo 2DS and new Nintendo 3DS XL systems, where for price and list of features that sit between both. Um, and this quote is from Nintendo of America President Reggie Filamez. This new addition to Nintendo's portable hardware line demonstrates our commitment to the handheld market. Um, the new Nintendo... New Nintendo 2DS XL sports a beautiful clamshell design and offers a great balance between price and performance. Um, the new Nintendo 2DS XL, I hate saying that whole name, will boast a screen as large as the one on new Nintendo 3DS XL system, though visuals will obviously not will obviously only be displayed in 2D. Nintendo reports the system is lighter but still packs the same power as the new Nintendo 3DS XL. Um, and then Kind of related. Reg- Reggie also confirmed that um, Nintendo will continue to release 3DS games into 2018, some of which will be announced at E3. By the way, that is right. Okay. Yeah. I'll say. And our copy and page was like, huh, that sounds like. <laughs> that was a very big difference. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so what? <laughs> um. <laughs> like, why? Uh, okay, you're saying this thing. No, yeah, I'm saying what as far as like. I thought you meant like what did I read? <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no. Reread the entire thing. Okay, no, I wasn't listening. No, it's so it's it's so it's just so weird. You cannot predict Nintendo at all. You yeah. just released your new console or whatever. You you would think that like at best like yeah okay they'll keep supporting software like you know this year into next year whatever because you know obviously there's such a big market like everyone has 3ds's so it's kind of hard to give up that market immediately so or whatever yeah. i think that would i would definitely understand that i never would have thought they're releasing new hardware yeah for the ds yeah and like, aren't you just competing with yourself at that point <laughs> kind of sort of yeah because <laughs> this is someone it's like instead of getting a switch someone's paying Oh, this is cheaper. I'll get this. Yeah, this, this is half like... the price, and and from a um, you know, my standpoint as far as the 3ds goes, if I want to replace my 3ds, this is the one I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. 
because I don't care about bleeding. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't either. I mean, it's like, cheaper and it's power. Well, it has the power of the new 3DS XL. I think this would be fine in a world where the Switch doesn't exist. Yeah. But it seems like they should be moving, trying to move away from the DS if they want, if they actually want people to get Switches. That's what I mean. Like, I mean, it's not necessarily bad. I mean, like, I like, I yeah, I would rather have this than a 3DS. Like, if I was trying to get a DS and I didn't already have like a 3DS yeah. or whatever, I would 100% go for this. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it seems, it seems like it's a, it's an alternate universe, Nintendo. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> this goes for them. I just don't know, like, is there a market for this? I'm, I'm very interested to see how it sells, but. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. does this distract from the Switch? Like, you know, does this take away, like, sales of the Switch? If it does. This is. I don't know, it's kind of one of those weird things to where it technically doesn't do anything... I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. It's hard to describe. It kind of feels like if someone... This wouldn't made attra- attract too many people from getting the Switch and, you know, to get this. Yeah. Because it's technically not anything different. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't do anything like, new or like, fancy. I mean, you can make the argument, maybe if you're, if you're getting this, you weren't getting a Switch anyway. Or yeah, whatever. at least not like, anytime soon. Like, if I had nothing or whatever, I hadn't either, and it was like, I could get the 2DS for 150 or I could do, I mean, it's more than a little bit more, but, you know, you, you could just save up a little, you know, another $100 or whatever and get a Switch. I would just get the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the new thing. That's the thing they're going to be supporting, you know. We'll but say. maybe they'll be supporting the DS way more than I thought they would because the Direct was like half 3DS yeah. and now they're releasing a new DS. And like I said, they're releasing 3DS games until 2018. Well, now it's more DT. No one can predict Nintendo. Yeah. No one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just have to see how this goes for them. Next story. This comes from Hope Corrigan from IGN. The new one point. 2-0 patch for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild allows users to change the language used in the game. Yay, rejoice. Uh, Revealed by Nintendo, the latest patch will allow players to choose between any of the nine languages that are built into the Switch version of the game. So it was already there, but they wouldn't let us until now. Wii U players will have to download a voice pack from the Nintendo eShop to utilize the new fu- feature. And the included languages are English, French, like French, French, and then Canadian French. German, French, French. <laughs> Italian, Spanish, like Spain, Spanish, and Latin America. Spanish. Which that that is inter- I, I, that is cool. That they did the Spain and Latin America yeah. versions. Like, apparently, like I, someone was talking about, like they very, 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 very rarely do both. Mm-hmm. So there were people like there was someone who's like they were really like happy that they had the Latin American version. Which I think that's cool. It's yeah. cool that they did that. Um, last two languages are Russian and of course Japanese. Yes. And let me tell you, once it's not. When this um, download on my Switch, I immediately change the language to Japanese. The subs better. Yes. You're casual <laughs> if you don't. <laughs> and this, if you don't watch it sub. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Just from the trailer, it already. Remember, I, mean, I was already telling you back then. I was like, yeah, I don't like these English voices. I don't like them at all. And so people know, Darby's one who usually goes dub over sub. I do. I mean, not that he watches too much anime, but still. Yeah, I'm a casual. Yeah. Um, but. Thing is, with the English dub, um, it's really just Zelda that's bad. I mean, most of the other ones that... I mean, there's not that much voice acting, but Zelda has the most, and she's the worst, or or the one that fits the least, or, yeah, just the I worst in general. Know, yeah. Just from what I've seen. I mean, most of the other ones are serviceable. They're not great, but they're not, I don't say they're bad. Yeah. Unless I'm forgetting of someone. It's like so much... Like I feel like Zelda is a good game to um, have to do the sub thing because you're already like reading half of the dialogue anyway you know it's yep. like and it's one of the you know if it was like a huge dialogue heavy game I don't think I would want to do that but mm-hmm. with this it's yep. yeah yeah so yeah I changed that right away I'm glad they did this um what what I'm very interested in Jeff is I really really want to hear um you play Zelda in Russian. I'm very oh, yeah. very, very interested. I mean I can that. I can switch it at any time. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about that. Yes. Okay. And also uh, along with this voice update, Nintendo has announced the details for 
Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild D- DLC Pack 1. Get that Switch shirt. I mean, it's not part of DLC Pack 1, but I mean, I guess it kind of comes with it. Just get, get the Switch shirt anyway. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm going to read through these things and we'll see what me and Darby think about them. Mm-hmm. And see if it's worth it. That was well, yeah. Although it's hard to say if it's worth it, but we'll get to that. I forgot everything. I just heard what was in there, but I already forgot. Go. <laughs> okay, first thing in it is Trial of the Sword. When you get to a certain sacred location, you can take on the new Trial of the Sword challenge. Face an onslaught of enemies one wave after another. Link starts the challenge without any equipment or weapons, so he nude. When all the enemies in a room are defeated, Link proceeds to the next. Clear all the trials, about 45 rooms in total, and the power of the Master Sword will be awakened. And it will always be in its glowing powered up state while usable. So yeah. I, I kind of like this thing. It sounds like it'd be a fun little challenge thing. Yeah, play a little trial thing. And the that Master Sword thing sounds appealing. Yeah. If not OP. <laughs> Depend if I'm understanding what it's saying right. On to the next thing. The Hero's Path mode. This new map feature shows the path Link has walked through Hyrule from the last 200 hours of gameplay. That's a lot of gameplay, Darby. That is. Use the time tracker bar to see where you've been the most time and where you have yet to explore. There's bound to be more adventures and maybe a shrine or two on the road less traveled. That is really cool. I yeah. really do like that. That's very interesting. But I'm like obsessed with like stats and stuff like that. Yeah. So See, this is one of those things I wish I... I mean, it doesn't do much for me now because I'll be done with the game but this thing's out, I assume. Yeah. And also, if I'm being honest, this sounds like one of those things that if it wasn't done when the game was up, maybe should have been patched in. I agree, yeah. Which might be a recurring theme. <laughs> yeah. But it, 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 it's kind of like also Adam Kovic from Fun House. He was talking about how like he kind of he wishes he could see a heat map of like where everyone went in Zelda, like everyone to mm-hmm. see like you know, like, I, I just like that kind of stuff's interesting. Yeah, and I guess yeah, this would be a cool thing because whenever you get a Switch or you play Zelda, this thing might, might be out. And if the story things sound cool, I assume you'll probably get the DLC yeah. pack whenever that kind of time pack comes. two definitely seems like the more interesting one. We'll talk about yeah. it, but obviously yeah, on to the next thing. The hard mode. This was a hot topic last time. Let's see what it's all about. In hard mode, enemies gradually regain health, so take them out as quickly as possible. All enemies are also powered up by one level. For example, red bacoblins in normal mode are now blue bacoblins. Enemies can also have higher maximum levels than they would in normal mode. Look up. You may also find enemies in treasure chests in the sky. Columbia from Bioshock confirmed? Yes. So, uh, once again, this is something that probably should either have been, in, I mean, base game, but if it wasn't done by then... Patch it in. Yeah. Well, especially since, and I'd be okay with the patching in thing and not being in the beginning, because this is not something people are going to start out with in this game. Mm-hmm. So, once people are done, and la- I mean, yeah. This is, there's, there's, I really can't think of any situation where I think it, it is okay to charge money for hard mode. <laughs> like, yeah. There's, uh, and as far as the hard mode itself, it sounds fine. I mean, it's, this could, at some point it just becomes increasingly easier, like you can take the most enemies out easily, in a way, once you get certain equipment and that kind of level. This might be mostly a thing that takes longer to get to that point, maybe. Yeah. Though I will say the whole um, though the health regain thing will be, would be a pain. I mean, in a good way because of the hard mode. Because right. especially for me, because I take it slow and steady for the most part. Yeah. Depending, and the flying in the sky thing is also interesting because jumping off things sometimes is a get out of jail free card because most things cannot get you. But if they can fly... Like yeah, that. they can fly and shoot arrows at you. That could be a pain. Yeah. So, and I wish something they did with this, which would be interesting to add on as an option, that I can't, I, w- I can't remember. I want to give credit to who said this. I think it was the Game Explain guys. For, um, for hard mode, they added, like, a food meat or whatever. So you can't... So either you have to eat. Yeah. So you're not just storing yeah, food yeah, yeah, yeah. or you have a full meter so you can't just continuously stuff your face mm. like eat like a two dozen apples to fully the regain your meter, health i kind of thought that that was going to be in the game already yeah. the um like you just in the base game that you had to eat 
a certain amount or whatever. Yeah. Like, I think that know. would have been a good hard mode edition. And that's kind of like what um, like Fallout, I think Fallout New Vegas had a hard mode that where like you had to eat food and water or whatever hmm. at certain times. So you had to, every time you went out, you had to plan and like take stuff with you, which is interesting. That's a very, yeah. that's something that's kind of like makes your hard, the hard mode more unique other than just more powerful enemies. Mm-hmm. Like, um... I'm kind of a baby, so I probably wouldn't do it much. Of it. I would not recommend it <laughs> yeah. doing. I would not recommend doing hard mode at first, definitely, because the game can be, you know, pretty difficult as it is. Yeah. But also, once you're done with it, you're probably not going to play it for a while. Yeah, I can't see many people so doing this yeah. when it comes out. Yeah, maybe I'm, like way down the road, maybe. Or something. Yeah. Next thing, travel medallion. Somewhere in the world, there is a chest with a travel medallion inside. When you use this, you can register your current location as a fast travel point on the map. You can only register one location using the travel medallion. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's going to be useful, but I'm trying to... I mean, there's shrines everywhere, so... Yeah. It only see certain locations where I'd find this kind of useful. Yeah, it's kind of a half thing. It's not yeah. that, you know, yeah. whatever. Only do one at a time. I mean, I understand the, the meaning of limits, so you can't put them literally everywhere. But, yeah. yeah. Um, on to the next thing. More armor. There are eight treasure chests placed around Hyrule containing armor themed as the previous Legend of Zelda titles. Watch for tips as to where the whereabouts of these chests as you travel around Hyrule. And, as people know, these pieces of armor include Majora's Mask, Minna's Helmet, the Phantom Armor, and most importantly, Tingle's Outfit. <laughs> oh, it's Link wearing a like green onesie with a... It's terrifying. <laughs> it is... <laughs> We, we all know what's going to happen so once this hilarious. thing is released. Everyone's going to be wearing this outfit. <laughs> oh, I want a tingle. I want a tingle yes. outfit. I want to wear it at Halloween. Yes. It's so funny looking. Indeed. And last thing in the DLC pack one is the Korok mask. The Korok mask is also hidden in a treasure chest somewhere in the world. While wearing this mask, it shakes whenever Link is near a hidden Korok location. There are 900 Koroks hiding in Hyrule. So this should help you discover quite a few of them. I mean, yeah, this is helpful when you're going for all 900, but yeah, if you're, if you're if, one of those crazy people. <laughs> yeah. And let's be honest, if you're, if you're that crazy, you're probably going to be looking on the internet a fair amount. But yeah, like, but 900 is absurd. Again, I think we talked about this before. I'm okay with that number because there it, there's enough to where you find it. So without trying to, cra- you know, too hard to find them, you find enough to upgrade the, your equipment as much as you need in the game. So. Yeah. From that case, I'm okay, but you're a crazy person if you're going to try to find all of them. Yep, but uh, there are there are those. Yep, and um, that is all for DLC Pack 1. So, it's kind of a, you know, it's a, like, it, I think there's there's enough there to make it interesting or whatever, but it's obviously, I think, Pack 2 is going to be yeah. the big one. Here's the thing that um, some people are talking about, like, saying, is this worth $20? No. No. The problem is... No. I mean, you're paying twenty dollars for the DLC pack too, and and let's be honest, some people keep on forgetting this fact. You don't have to buy this thing right away. You can wait. No. I would. Like, I probably would. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not buying this thing anytime I'm, soon. I would look for what's going to be in pack two, and then I'll see about. I mean, that. if the pack, if the story mode DLC in pack two is, um, you know, as good as it can be and as long, it that's probably worth twenty dollars on its own. Probably, yeah. So this is just just kind of becomes added stuff. I mean, and the Trial of the Sword thing sounds really cool. Like, yeah, a cool little challenge thing that I would definitely do if I got it. Yeah. Like, I definitely will go back to Zelda for some of this DLC stuff. So, like, if they announce Pack 2, let's say around August, September. Mm-hmm. And it's something I, like, I will buy it right away and maybe do Trial of the Sword until then. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd say right now this is not worth it. I mean, yeah. obviously, if you're just so into Zelda and you've done everything and you're just itching for more, then yeah, sure, go for it and do the Trials of the Sword and stuff. But other than that, I would just wait for yeah. Pack 2. And, but yeah. there's, and we made this argument before. There is the argument where Nintendo could have made this stuff separate. <laughs> yeah. Or could have, should have. <laughs> eh, probably. Yeah. I mean, let, let's be honest right now. And I'm not being the, saying this sarcastically. There are people that are by just Tingle's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I might be one of them. <laughs> it's so funny. Yep. That <laughs> I might be one of them. Yep, so it's all for the Zelda news. Okay, last news story of today. <sighs> okay. 
This comes from Jason Fryer from Kotaku. You tired, Tyler? Um, Tyler. Tyler. You tired, Jeff? No. I'm just getting ready to drop the bomb. All right. <laughs> this is a big one, guys. One of the fall's big Nintendo Switch games will be Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. <laughs> this monstrosity. <laughs> a game that has been rumored for <laughs> quite some time and does indeed exist, as confirmed by art assets provided to Kotaku. The game will mix Nintendo's iconic plumber and friends with characters from Ubisoft popular Rabbids series. Although the person who sent the assets, assets asked us not to share them, they corroborate the existence of a bizarre crossover RPG that's currently scheduled to come to Switch in either August or September. Some more games in that time zone. Um, uh, this August? Wait, what? Yeah, this August and September. Whoa. Yep, this is all true. Ubisoft is developing Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle on the publisher's proprietary Snowdrop engine, according to the assets we've seen, which people don't know, that's what Ghost Recon Wildlands on, as well as the... That Avatar game that's been announced, no. and also as well as the new South Park game, and uh, I'll say after I'm done reading this why that's good. The game's selling points appear to be a turn-based combat, b two-player local co-op, and c a goofy sense of humor. <laughs> and the art we've seen features Mario and crew wielding guns that shoot laser beams. The game will apparently have eight playable characters: Mario. Luigi, Peach, and bizarrely, four rabbits dressed as Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and Peach. Jeff, how did the how does this game exist? I don't know. How was this? I'm embracing the madness right now. I mean, how was until we see How it. was this not just a troll thing online? I don't know. I swore that's what Nintendo. It, when I heard this at first, like way back whenever we first heard this, I was like, yeah. "There's no way that's real." I was like, no, I'm all in. Like, I so hope that this game's good. I want it to be like, so bad. I'm legitimately going to be really sad if it's not good. Because yeah. I want it to be good so much. Because it is so bizarre. Yeah. Well, a lot of people online are saying there's no way this can be good. Or I'm just writing off because rabbits. But this is kind of one of those goofy things. I'm like, this could just be a really fun, goofy, fun <laughs> game. Well, and it's kind of what, it's, like you said, Ubisoft is developing, yeah, right? Like, so that Nintendo's not, like, if you're Ubisoft, and now you have the chance to make a, a Mario, Mario game, game, you don't mess that up. No. Or at least, if, if I'm, like, the big heads of Ubisoft, I'm like, you're gonna make this right. Like, yeah. we are not gonna screw this up. Because how many developers get a chance to work on Mario? Yeah. But, like, this is... I mean, maybe I guess that was Super Mario Run made, made by Nintendo, or was that? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then this might be like the this is the first or one of the few games I feel like Mario games made by non Nintendo. Um, <laughs> and that was I, I, another. Yeah, no, yeah, another, yeah, another yeah, Super yeah, Mario yeah, RPG yeah. made by Square Enix, yeah, and yeah, yeah. technically Paper Mario is made by Intelligent Systems, the oh, Mario yeah, yeah. not technically owned by Nintendo. It's at least just it's not a common yeah, yeah. thing. It's also, with not every day. Yeah, either. again, that's interesting to see like Nintendo not working on it, which I'm kind of happy with because their last couple Mario RPGs they worked on. May not we're the best. We're not exactly the best. Yeah, and you can get it kind of, maybe this. You'll have an interesting take on this. Like it might yeah. not be just your normal Nintendo type. Also, game. Um, with the Snowdrop engine, like I said I'll bring this up. That's interesting. That just means this that Snowdrop engine is going to be working on the Switch. So mm. what I'm getting at is South Park on the Switch. Yeah. I mean, like, I would. I think you should probably just be happy just to get South Park. Period. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, definitely a possibility. I know something that this means is that that, a little that's bonus. cool to see that, that can actually it actually can run on the Switch. I mean, yeah. it's probably not pushing it to its extremes. I'm sure, but you no, know. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a very in- interesting thing and goes with what we figured Nintendo will be announcing, presumably at E3, some games that are coming out this year. Yeah. If it is coming out August September, and the fact that means there'll be Three kind of big Mario games coming out for the Switch this year. Uh, this weird turn-based combat. <laughs> and, and then two-player two player local co-op. I hope it's really fun to play two-player. Like, I yeah. hope that it's just a dumb, fun game that we can play. Obviously, I'm not uh, immediately sold on this, but I am intrigued, and I want to see more. So bizarre. I yeah. love it. Though, I find it weird about the whole rabbit's dress as the other playable characters thing. 
that's the only thing that screams like, oh, this is going to be like some kind of weird budget thing, kind of. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I guess depending on how they do it. Yeah. Because the rabbits are weird. All right, Jeff. I believe that's all the news we have this week. Yep, yep, yep. Now it's summertime, Jeff. Summer. And with summertime means we might actually be able to play games. Yep. For people who have listened to this before, you probably heard us say a million times, we do not have time to play games. <laughs> and wait till the summer. Then we'll play yeah, games. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how many times in the last like month or two I've been like, oh, you know, this summer, I'll, I'll play it this summer. I'll catch up on this summer. I'll, I'll, I'll get through my backlog this summer. Jeff, do you have faith in us? You think we can actually do this? Yeah. Do you have faith? Yeah. Yeah, I think this podcast will give us more motivation than normal. Mm, mm. Well, why we, why is this podcast specifically going to give us motivation? I mean, because we we want to do this, and to do this, we should probably play games. Probably. <laughs> well, Jeff, I think both of us have come today prepared. Yep. Okay. With a list of goals. Yep. And this is our plan for this. We're going to say our goals, and we're planning on after we read our goals. Each looking at each other's and say whether or not we think the other one will achieve their goals and which ones in particular. Yeah. And at the we're gonna try at the end of the summer to see if we did achieve our goals and if the other person was right or not. Yep. So we'll see it's a little fun how, thing. how much we fail. I'm yep. sure we will fail. Yep. All right, Jeff, why don't you start the start start us off, Jeff. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're just planning on going back and forth one goal yeah. at a time. Um my first goal, and this is an obvious one, finish Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Simple a Simple one. That's a lot of people's goals. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, like, you're you're probably going to do that soon. You're already close. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, hey, I better put it on there. But yeah, it's, you'll see, um, as I go through this list, what I mean by, like, finishing and stuff may mean different things depending on the game. Yeah. Well, but, um, yeah. Yeah, for this, it's... Being the final boss, at least, and yeah, doing whatever else, little things I want. I, I say you beat Ganon, you at least have most of the shrines, and I'll yeah. say you pass. Yeah. You have my stamp of approval. Mm-hmm. Well, you can probably guess what my number one is. Finish Horizon. Finish Horizon Zero Dawn. Which I think is you'll on, finish it. You, you, have, you have faith in me, Jeff? I have faith. When do you think I'll finish it by? Because that's I have a lot further to go than you do with Zelda. Yeah, well, this is the thing. I give you constant updates. I don't know like how long Horizon is, how much more I would go. Yeah, I mean, I have a more of a, I've given a more clear understanding like how much I have to go. That is true. But yep, that is number one. That is number one priority right now. Of is course. finish that game because I love every second of it. And I just have not had time to play it, and I am so excited to. Continue going with that. So, yeah, if I don't have Horizon done by the end of the summer, something went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> or, it just, I think. or it took a turn and it's bad and you're like, screw this game. Yeah, that would be a strange turn of events. Yep. Yeah. Um, my next goal. Finish and platinum ukulele. Ah. Yeah. Have you already looked at the list? The trophy list? Yeah, I can't remember them all, but I remember thinking, that yeah, isn't bad. Yeah. Is it, I mean... It's a collective font, so the hardest thing is to find everything. Yeah. Did you used to? Did you find everything in the old banjo games just on your own? Like, um, I was a little kid, so I'm having trouble remembering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, as far as like, if you mean by on my own, you mean without the use of the internet? I don't uh, know if I had the exact, exactly access to that at the time like yeah. I do now. Well, I mean, like, there's, in a lot of games, like, there's collectibles, and, and I just say, like, screw that, yeah. and I keep going. I don't even try to get them. But then there's some games, like, the Sly games. Mm-hmm. I think that's, like, one of the only games ever that I actually sought out to collect all the things. And I did not use the internet, because I was a little kid. <laughs> yeah, I'll try not to use the internet, but I can imagine I'll end up having to use it for And that would be platinum number one for you, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I think you can do it. Yeah. All right, well, I guess we should say that, but I think you can do it. Uh, we right. can do it as we do it so we don't have to go back and read them all. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. My number two is, and, I, and I'm kind of, this is where I was talking about, like, I'm, I'm making my, I'm trying to be a little more realistic with what I can actually do. Mine is play enough Final Fantasy 15 to mm-hmm. form a good opinion 
like an educated opinion on how I feel about the game. So basically, I'm like, if I end up absolutely loving it and I want to go all the way to the end of summer and it's great or whatever, that's wonderful. If I play a ton of it and I end up not really liking and want to set it down, that's fine. If I play a ton of it and I love it but still want to set it down, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I want to play a lo- enough of it to where like I know what to like, you know, like a substantial portion of Final Fantasy 15 because I paid $60 for it at launch and it has sat on my desk forever and I'm kind of annoyed about that yeah I think you knew that yeah yep 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 Final Fantasy 15 may or may not come out for mine <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just I'm so interested in the game it's just yeah. god I've had no time well, I'll move it up well, my thing was worded differently but that's that's practically what I said. I said start and play a substantial amount of Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, same thing same you said. Thing, yeah. So, I think I can do it. I think so. Yeah. I don't think you play the, it will take you very long. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the thing is, like I mentioned earlier, some of this is kind of depends how you look at substantial amount. Yeah. Kind of what you said. Many how I feel. It's you'll know. I think I think I'll, I'll feel when that because I'm not convinced. Yeah, this, I'm not convinced. This is my realistic thing. Like I don't think I'll end up finishing this game. I don't think I'll finish 15. Either, even if I like it, I don't think yeah. I'll finish it. And because I'm not convinced I'm going to like 15. It's very up in the air for yeah. me. Like, I don't know if it's going to be my type of Best thing. everything else. Yeah. That, honestly, I got I got 15 for free. Like, because of a sale thing. Mm-hmm. So, that's why I have it. So, I, mean, I obviously won the game, but I wasn't as completely sold on it as I am a lot of the games that came out this year. Yeah. I just feel like I kind of, like need to that's a game I feel like I need to play yeah. like I'm just such a big Final Fantasy fan and it was such a like that game went through so much hell to come out and it was such a historic thing for it to come out like as a gamer and as someone who like somewhat feels like they know enough about games to do a podcast about them I feel like I need to play that game and at least have an understanding yeah. of it you know so um my number three this is more um hopeful or, um, yeah, whatever. Play and finish Gravity Rush 2 mm. by the end of the summer. Uh, re- reminder, let's look up that sale if you haven't already after this. We sh- yeah, I should. I, I, this is a game that, like, I absolutely adore Gravity Rush, and, like, I knew Gravity Rush 2 wasn't going to sell, and it was like, I was telling myself, I need to support them or whatever, I want to do this or whatever, and then just the time came, and I was playing Horizon, and then school, and it's just, I never got to it, and I feel so bad about that. So, you think, do you think I can beat Her- Gravity Rush 2 by the end of the summer? I think you can, because yeah. I, I think for this game, especially more than 15, you're motivated to do it. Because yeah. you really do love um, the first one. And also good news. I don't know if you thought about this or, or counting that as this. There's also that free Raven DLC that's out. Mm. I don't know I, if you're counting I, that. I also did not... I didn't know that was free, actually. I don't think. I believe it is free. I can't remember if it was limited time or not. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, I just didn't know. That's cool. Yep. Okay, my next one. Finish Watch Dogs 2. Mm. How far are you? I, I do need to know that. Um, because you were, you were a lot e- further than I was. I honestly can't remember that time. I'm easily ten plus hours. Okay. Like I, I'm a substantial way through, I think. Yeah. And like, I really do like that game. It just, it just ended up because ended up school starting, and then I could never get back to it because I don't play my PS4 much at school, and it just kind of. Um, yeah, I just never really got back to it that much. Um, and there's a difference between these games as far as like as me going back to games that, you know, I've been away for a while. I feel really motivated to go back to this game, so I really do like it a lot. Mm, yeah, no, it, I, you did seem to really, really like that game, which I'm glad. Yeah. Um, as far as finish, I don't know exactly what that means in there. Like, as far as like just finishing the main story, I don't know how much like side quest stuff I'll do. Yeah, and it does seem like there's a lot of side quest stuff. Yeah. I don't think I'll touch the DLC though because I only have so much time in life. Yeah, yeah. I think if you put your head down, I think you could definitely yeah. do that's, that. That's um, as far as like a big game though. That's that's gonna be the next on my list after Zelda. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm kind of ukulele is kind of a more in between like. You're kind of already doing it. Some, yeah. yeah, I'll go talk to you more later, but I'm I'm having um. My plan for this summer and going forward for the next while will be having a big game to play because that seems to be most of the games that are coming out now. 
Yeah. Like really big long games and then having like smaller games to play in between them. So I don't. So, get there's tired so many of games where we're having to like plan out how yeah. we play them. <laughs> Yeah, right. and I'll go into more of that later. Well, I fun. had mine. I feel like this is kind of just a cop out thing. So, I mean, if you want me to push to something more, I can. I had revisit Watch Dogs too. I had just basically revisit it, play at least play it some, like not let it sit on my shelf the entire summer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I you know I I could change it to play a substantial amount, but it's definitely like further down on my thing. But I really did like the game yeah. from the little bit of, from the like. I played about five hours or something, and I really actually do like legitimately like the game mm-hmm. more than I thought I would. I'm kind of surprised I bought it, but but I did. Enjoy I think you it. bought into the hype at the time. I did buy. It. I, I think it was. I think I kind of bought the hype, but I was like, I think. But really I think I was, was legit. Yeah, yeah, I think I was really legitimately was. more excited about. I think it Greg Miller are. might have been part of it. Yeah. Like he was singing that game's praise. No, no, so I really so wanted it for a while, but Greg was more like, "Okay, this is actually just." Like, I think I'll definitely like this because there was always the doubts because of Watch Dogs 1. Yeah. But, yeah. So. No. Yeah. Um, just to break the... Uh, just the way you um, started out with that and just to break the trend, I'm going to say you don't do that. Mm. There's, I think there's a good possibility that yeah. it's... Because there's so summer. much and you don't sound as into and it necessarily. you'll see, like, there's yeah. games down here that might make that not happen, too. <laughs> so. Okay. Next one from me. Get as far as I can in Puyo Puyo Tetris Adventure Mode. <laughs> I say that because there might be a point where I can't go any farther because I'm just bad. Ah, uh, okay. I was about to say, it can't be that long. <laughs> no, no. Okay. It's like, I'm already having some trouble. <laughs> I mean, I'll get better, but I'm going to definitely try to do the game. I wonder if... I mean, I think there's definitely a good possibility you do make it through... But I also think there's a possibility that you end up just saying, screw it, and realizing that you have more fun playing it with us than single player anyway, and end up saying, you know, mm-hmm. screw this and not going through with it. So, sure, to break it up, I will say you end up saying, screw this, and not doing it. Okay. But, oh, wait. It means going as far as I can or beating it? Uh, beating it. Uh. Well, well, Jeff, obviously you go as far as you can. I mean, well, are, you, are you saying like you, you might As get... far as my skill level can take uh, yeah. me. Oh, yeah. I think you'll do that. Okay. I just, you know, that might not be the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, I also had... Well, if you want me to change more fun, I can say beat it. Okay. I'll All say right. beat it. All right, sure. Because so, I won't... Well, this is a goal, so yeah, I'm going to say beat it. Um, all right, my next one got... Um, I guess it got changed by the news story today. <laughs> but my number five was get to the point in Persona 5 where I won't be able to stream. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure, we'll say November 9th or whatever. Half, I'll, I'll, about I'll, halfway through the game. All right, yeah, whatever. All right, so I'll say like, I get to that date in Persona 5 this summer. Hmm. Very long pause. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's halfway through the game. I'm going to say no. Because at that point, you're either in it for the long haul or not. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, well, this is not for that, but what about the um the, uh, the, the previous stream date? <laughs> I would say yes. Okay. Um, this is the next one for me. is a kind of admittedly weird one, but I didn't know how any other way to put it. It's I could break it up because you kind of did. I kind of said start Horizon slash Persona 5 slash Nier slash Gravity <laughs> Rush 2. Because I only have so much time and like, even so much money. So it's if you start any of those? Kind of. I don't know. I can break it up. I mean, I have Horizon with me. It, I, yeah. Like, and you, it won't cost you any money. I yeah. think, like, yeah, you'll probably, you, you might start Horizon at some point. Uh, I'll at least break up Horizon. Okay. Um, and- be, I'm interested to see, it, like, if you end up getting to near Automata, though, yeah, because I know you. I'm not, I was. I'm excited for it too. But you seem like you were like out of all of our friends. You were the ones that were, that were the most looking forward mm-hmm. to it. Um, the reason I put near in here, I, we even talked about it. It's more of uh, it will probably be like a Black Friday thing, right? Yeah. But if there is a very good sale, I can see myself saying screw right, it, just, bye. Yeah, just going ahead and doing the trigger on it. And same thing with Persona Five and Gravity Rush too. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Honestly, if I'm... I think you'll start some one of those. <laughs> if I'm being honest, as far as, like, how much I want to... The order of what... Or how much I want to play some of these games, I'm obviously going to do Finish Zelda. And I'm talking about the big games. And then I'm going to do Watch Dogs, too, because I want to get back to that. I'm going to try to resist buying some of these games until I just get through this stuff. Um... And then try to do Final Fantasy 15. Persona's next on my list. Mm, yeah. So this is the, that's the game I'm more interested in in all this. And it's also um, breaking up the stuff because it'll be turn-based yeah, and breaking up the, from the open world games. Yeah, yeah. So that's why if I had a choice, Horizon would not be next. Mm. Just to break it up. Yeah. As far as the big games. I do want at some point though you do have to get into her. Right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. This one is weird. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So yes. All right. Well, my my next one was kind of also a comment was first buy Final Fantasy XII Remaster, mm-hmm. but along with that, play it enough to where I get to like like it's not just like oh this game used to, I used to love this game and then put it away. And we're back. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, you and Final Fantasy twelve. You said, um, yeah, I want to buy it and then uh, computer uh, play it enough to like. This is not like very tied down, but play yeah. it enough to where it's not like more than just revisiting an old game. Just uh, like get a taste of it. Like actually, kind of like get into it in a way where I'm playing it for a while, like multiple mm-hmm. nights. Hmm. Stuff. I would say yes. Yeah. You, you're definitely excited for the game. I am very excited for that, yeah. I just realized something that's kind of bad as far as these goals is we're saying yes one by one is we might change our mind on some of them once we hear the whole picture. Mm. And we'll figure that out later. Um, we feel that way. So we we can just do a small sub episode saying, okay, we change our things. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's well, a little, This is a little fun thing. Not like we're betting. Yeah, it's a loose thing. Okay, go on to the next one because I... Well, I did the Horizon Persona Near and Gravity Wrestling on one one. In a perfect world, I could do all those games, but. <laughs> but not a perfect world. Okay, this next one, Darby, it involves you. Hmm. This summer. Yeah, this one involves you too. I want to make substantial progress in Tales of Bears area. <sighs> I want to believe. I want to believe that this is true. I, be- I believe we can do it, Darby. I think we will. I think like, Because we are motivated. There's enough weekends and stuff. Yeah. Like, and we can do that on well, I mean, we, Yeah, we do on weekdays. I mean, yeah. not... We used to... We got through a bunch of other Tales games while we were doing other stuff. Because yeah. it's just like when we were together. It's like And, and because we played at absurd hours of the night. Yeah. So we can... I believe we can do I it. I think we can do it. We don't have time. I want to do it. Yeah. Okay. My next one is actually... And I don't think this one's going to be true. Convince you to play Final Fantasy XII for the first time, yeah, whether it's I, like I whether it, whether it's like whether it's like taking mine or whatever, and convincing you to actually like sit down with it for a while. I don't feel confident though, because this summer's crazy. Yeah, I don't feel confident in that. No, just for the fact that there's so much I want to play this summer, that would be above it. Yeah, but if it, this was a longer term just in general girl I would say yes okay. I'll throw that out there okay. Yeah, I do but want you to play it at yeah. some point because I need someone else to yeah, play yeah. definitely I, 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 I know I like the game yeah I know but people like people crap on that game a lot and yeah. other people love it there's kind of like no mm-hmm. very few in-betweens um hmm. okay so for my next goal let me see how I want to do this okay these these next whatever pretty much the remainder mines are games that are I want to start and finish mm. actually I'll say these first because I technically I already started them I want to complete I want to complete Snake Pass and Shovel Knight the original campaign mm. at least yeah because I had those on my Switch already those are very short you got, yeah you got that yeah well you might be saying that a lot for my upcoming stuff mm. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this one's kind of simple I just want to get good enough to hold my own in injustice ah and then on top oh, of that okay what, what do you mean okay. and I want to be able to beat Kyrie. oh okay like on a somewhat consistent basis like we're we're at least trading like it's like one okay, okay. I win one then he wins one okay um, and by the way Kyrie. What do you mean hold your own do you mean like online or do you mean against us cause against us you, that should I'll, be a problem I'll say online okay like not not be great, but be like good enough. Okay, so all that's wrapped up into one, just so I know. Yeah. I'm going to say 
Will I have enough time to put into Injustice to actually... Like, I'm just going to say no just for the fact, as far as I know, you're not planning on getting Injustice yourself. And to compete online, you'll need to play it pretty consistently. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. If you're just planning on playing mine, probably not. Can I beat Kyrie though? Who's Kyrie's main going to be? I don't know. I can't even remember what he did in regular Injustice. If... He likes a lot of fast characters, but... Uh, Actually, do you even play regular Injustice? Not Injustice, okay. only Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I don't know. Then I have no idea. Uh, who knows? Sub-Zero. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I only have two more. Okay. Um, I got... I guess five, technically. Okay. We'll just rapid fire through them. Yeah. Okay. Um, first one. Start and finish Night in the Woods. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When... I, I, ha- I have already bought this game. Yeah, okay. It is on my PlayStation 4 ready for me to play at some point in time. Uh, how long is that? I, I want to say it was like 8 yeah. to 10. I saw 8 to 10 hours. Oh, I didn't know it was that long. Okay. I still need to see more about that. Like, I know Vegas this is one of those games I've there. seen and heard enough impressions I know I am in. I do not want to see any more. Then, yeah. I mean, if you're already that far. Yeah, in, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's on I mean partly because it's a story-related thing. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yes. I right, think you will. All right, another man resists the temptation to buy a switch. Oh, like make make it to the fall. I think financially it might help that happen too. But I say yes. Yeah, <laughs> because eh, I feel like maybe it, depending how things go at Mario, you may not resist anymore. But yeah, and I think I think I can hold off until Mario. Yeah. I, I think you got you got not, enough games to occupy enough. your time. Yeah, and. I've played so much Mario Kart already on mm-hmm. uh, Wii U. It's not yeah. like to me that's not as much of a new thing as mm-hmm. a lot of other people who never had yeah. experience with Wii U's. Mm-hmm. Okay, next one for me. Start and complete Little Nightmares. What is that? That's um, I'll show you real quick. You might be saying that for a couple of these games. <laughs> <laughs> I have also ordered this game. Yeah, I'll show you the cover. Huh, I legitimately don't know if I know this. Uh, and I think we talked about it last time. It's, um, I'll just, do, 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 do. I think it was from old, um, Vamp, 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 Vamp. That's creepy. Yep. Um, I think it's from old, um, Media Monocle Kill guys, I want to say. Huh. It had a, it has a physical edition. I ordered that, so you can, you can play it if you want to. Is it like, so it's a 2D. It's, I think I told you, I think it's the one some people compared to kind of like Inside. Oh, wait, okay, okay, yeah, 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 I do remember I was talking about that now. Kind of, sort of. I mean, oh, yeah. Not as straight exactly like it, but... Short, I'm guessing? Yeah, pretty short. Yeah. Maybe, I, long, because it's a physical thing, I think it's more in the six hour range, maybe. Oh, yeah. Something like that, but if you're able to go on like indie binges and <laughs> stuff, I want to play a bunch of games like that, like Edith Finch, which obviously we're both playing. Well, like, I, like they're not similar yeah. games, but I mean, I yeah. want to go through a bunch of like smaller kind of. That's my plan. Tiles like and that, and you so. can see I'm continuing that trend. The next couple, <laughs> yeah. So I also this is a big one. Finish the main story, like not the DLC, which I've already bought or whatever. Which who freaking knows. Finish the main story of Witcher 3. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I'm kind of close. Like, I'm, pr- I'm, I'm like in the like last few sections, but I'm so obsessed with doing side stuff and there's just so much other stuff. I think but. yes. And I think at some point you just need to say, I'm, n- I'm not going to stop until I finish this game. Sounds like you're enough time where you can do that. You can I'll just that. go. I'll go like a month where I play that nonstop, and then I won't for like a month or two. Cause it's just so big. Yeah. Like if I had only focused on that, I would miss everything else mm-hmm. in the world. And it's not because Witcher Three is definitely like in probably in my top five games of all time. But it's just it's just so large. Yeah. I don't know. I feel. I think I can do it though. I think I'm close enough to the end of the main game that I can do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Think you can do it? Okay, my next one. Start and finish Cosmic Star Heroin. Uh, you know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you have it? Or nope. It? Oh, yeah. I'm just making the plan. I'm going to play all these little indie games. No. Yeah. I think this one's like 15 hours. Uh, like a J, JRPG style. And from what I've seen, it's... um, You get heat. There's a picture of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have seen some stuff. Yeah. It seems like each battle is kind of a puzzle type thing. You get healed between things, and yeah. I guess it makes sense. This is a shorter thing. 
I've seen stuff like this looks awesome. I say no. I think we're getting too many of these, and that's mm. like fifteen hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. All right, just for the sake of time, this is my last one, and <laughs> it's play pray in any way at any mm. time any bit even if it's like i plug it in and just play like a little bit in august right before we go back to school just in okay. any way shape or form i have prey in my hands and i play it okay just to clarify I, <laughs> the I, demo I, does not count. okay i'm gonna say no <laughs> i say he's gonna i think that's I too much. Friday. i think that's like yeah. that's, i'm very interested in it but it's i'm not completely sold it kind of depends on reviews but it's looking like it's getting like there's some early stuff and people are saying good things but mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. Oh, this is one I'm not even sure myself, but I've seen enough the way I'm interested. I'll do more research, but I figure I put it in. Starting to finish Blackward Crossing. I don't know if I know that one is. You probably recognize trailers and stuff. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like a cool walking simulator thing. Your reviews have been really good. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, just the 15 hour um, RPG. I don't know if you'll be in. You'll be up for that after Persona. And, uh, well, let's have a more in between thing. <laughs> or even Zelda. Yeah. Okay. Do you got any more? No. I, I, okay. I, I have spent. one more. And it's kind of anticlimactic. I mean, in a way. All right, here we yeah, go. As far as being a last thing. Starting to finish Mr. Shifty. Oh, yeah. yeah you, you're doing that. <laughs> is, is that like coming out? That's coming out in the next few weeks, right? It's already out. Or is it already? Okay, yeah. Wait, well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It is already I'm out. just waiting to at least get through some of my other stuff before I get yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. Especially that you have a portable thing, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah, my plan is to play a bunch of small games while I'm playing these bigger games. Yeah. That's my plan for the summer and the foreseeable future. I mean, I'm going to be playing a lot of big games, but I just hope I'm able to even do half of what I want to do. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I believe that's all we got. Yep. Uh, unless the, yeah, yeah that is I it. think that is it um, we will update at the end of the summer I guess I guess the podcast after we're back in school so we we take advantage of the full summer yes, yes. Back, to we'll let the you entire know, time to do it yeah to let you know how we did and how yeah. bad we have failed well um, also this summer now that me and Jeff both have a lot more free time to to work on this um, podcast and nerds and large at general in general. Oh uh, yeah, we wanted to do this. <laughs> yeah, oh, like I'm just gonna mention a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a lot more time, so we're gonna start to try to do other things. I think the first thing on the radar is we're gonna try to do um like spoiler cast type things for movies and some shows that we're like interested in. Mm-hmm. I think the first one we're going to try to do Guardians of the Galaxy this weekend. We're going to yep. try to uh, do just like a quick like 30 minute like just us talking about like kind of just like a casual thing like we saw the movie mm-hmm. now we discuss like what we think about it. And uh, we're going to try to do this with multiple things. Like one for sure is when Game of Thrones comes back. Yeah. We're going to do that for every episode of Game of Thrones. We're just as soon as we um finish watching it, we're going to just sit down, turn the mics on and talk. Mm-hmm. Because um, we 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 figured out that like after every week of Game of Thrones, we ended up just sitting in my ha- in my living room talking for an hour about it anyway. <laughs> so we're just gonna turn the um, mics on for that, and this is probably gonna be in a separate uh, podcast channel. I'm gonna try to get Nerds at Large spoiler cast. Jeff doesn't even know this. I'm gonna try. Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna try bombs. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get that set up, and um, obviously they're gonna be on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to also try to do more video stuff. Yes, yes. Especially like with the spoiler cast. So maybe if it's, it'll just be me and Jeff sitting there, you'll just at least be able to see us talking. We're going to try to get better, cam- you know, like, good cameras. For right now, it's going to be like phone stuff. I mean, it's <laughs> not going to be the most high quality. Great. I'll actually have to think about what I'm wearing. Yeah. Jeff is currently wearing a um, Kool Aid shirt. So, yeah. Kool Aid Man shirt. I mean, like. What, there's nothing wrong with that. Not to say there's anything wrong with that. They wear suits every podcast. Of course. Yeah, you're quiet. Oh, I actually need to talk to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's another spoiler the cast thing we can do. Just oh, for the funsies. What? Bojack Horseman. Yes, 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 yes. That should come, be coming out this summer. That'd be fun. When does that... When does they that haven't set a release date. It was normally around July. All right, nice. Yeah, one hundred percent. And also, we're, and also, just other thing. These are just what we have planned, but like... I'm, I'm trying to work on just videos that I can do, like quick things I can do, just recording something and editing together stuff. 
I'm working on something for the new Death Note movie. I'm going to do something like with that, comparing it to the anime. I think Jeff's gonna, Jeff will try to like figure out some things he can do on his own. Basically, we're just going to try different things with this YouTube channel and the podcast and stuff and just kind of see what works and see what we're capable of now that we'll actually have time to do it. <laughs> because before, we've barely been able to even do this podcast on time. <laughs> so... Just keep an eye out for that. I'm excited. Yep, yep. I'm excited to try to learn how to do all this. And if you have like ideas or feedback, I just came up with a video idea. Mm. I'll, I'll tell Dari after this. Secrets. Yes. All right. So, with all that housekeeping, I get to say all that housekeeping thing <laughs> hey. on podcast host. We actually have. Yeah, we're Maybe. doing we're doing things, Jeff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for listening, everyone. We'll yep, be back. Thank you. We'll be back next week, hopefully actually on time. Yep, yep, yep. Tuesdays is what we're going to shoot for. We're going to be a lot more consistent now. So. Yeah, and I think we mentioned this earlier, his heads up. There will probably be less news in the next podcast because yeah. it's taking a lot of that week's news in this one. Yeah, yeah, because we're a little late this week. Yeah. But, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for listening. Okay, thank you. Bye.